This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the latest iPad, the iPad Air, a 10-inch tablet or 9.7 inch that's actually gotten a lot smaller and lighter. Witness the fact I can hold it with one hand. We're going to look at it now. So this is Apple's latest generation iPad. The fifth generation iPad, though, is not called the iPad 5. It's called the iPad Air. Yep, they're mixing the names from different product lines, and it makes us wonder if there's going to be an iPad Pro somewhere in the future, but... What's different about it? The first thing you're going to notice, look how narrow the bezels have gotten. The, the last generation iPad, all previous generation iPads had pretty roomy bezels. And I'll show you the difference right here. Here's the iPad with Retina display. Look at the size of the bezel there, right? Compare it to this. Design language is obviously a lot like the iPad Mini, and that carries around to the back of the product, too. Take a look. We've got the space gray model here. It's also available in silver with a white front. Again, it looks a lot like the iPad Mini, and that's a good thing because this is a more svelte, modern design, and you can see how thin it's gotten, too. Right here we have our stereo speakers, the lightning port, the bottom. Controls are really where you'd expect them to be on an iPad. Apple doesn't mess with that too much. We have our volume controls right here. Slider over here can either handle screen rotation, lock, or silent mode if you want to use it for that, and the power button is up top. 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack up top here. Camera on the back. 5 megapixel improved camera. And we have a front camera as well above the display. Now look at the difference in thickness. You can see it here. And footprint. It's gotten even thinner. And notice how it's smaller too since the bezels have been reduced. In this direction right here, it's obviously smaller as well. And it only weighs one pound. The old one was almost one and a half pounds, making it a heavy 10-inch tablet. And it really was starting to feel like a burden compared to all the Android tablets on the market that were getting lighter and lighter. So we're really glad to see Apple once again reset the register, so to speak, and bring us a one-pound 10-inch tablet. And that, that doesn't mean that they cut back on quality either. You still have the lovely glass on the front, the metal on the back. High-class looking product. That much easier to hold and handle and enjoy. So you're reading a book, you're not going to be like, God, this is getting heavy. No, not anymore. Tablets running iOS 7, as you would expect, just like the new iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C, Apple's latest operating system with a more minimalist looking design. No more skeuomorphism. Your calendar doesn't look like a paper calendar anymore and so on. Fast, responsive as Apple A7 CPU, just like the iPhone 5S, which is an extremely fast CPU. It's a dual-core CPU. You don't always need quad-core, because this one does as well in benchmarks. There's a lot of competing quad-core, and it has power VR SGX graphics inside. Very fast on benchmarks, so we'll take a look at Geekbench 3 and see what it says. And there's our result, which is putting it at the top of the heap among all tablets that you can run Geekbench on, which means Android tablets right now and iOS tablets, and this is a little bit faster even than the iPhone 5S, which is not surprising because the tablets usually are. They have a little more room for thermal dissipation so they can be run a little bit faster without the product getting too hot. Clock speed, Apple's keeping us in the dark about that. The iPhone 5S is 1.3 gigahertz. I would expect that this is at least that, if not more. For our SunSpider JavaScript test, you can see the result right here. 380.7 milliseconds, very fast getting as fast as some Windows machines, in fact, for rendering JavaScript inside a web browser. Programs, of course, launch quickly, and we're going to take a look at some games, because those are generally the most demanding of the tablet to see how they play. This is a 64-bit CPU. Uh, right now, there's not a whole lot of 64-bit so 64 software out there, but in the future, we'll, we expect to see that. Will that make a huge imp performance improvement? I don't know so much, but it's going to allow it to address more RAM in the future, which is an interesting prospect. iOS typically doesn't consume a whole lot of RAM. The operating system is very streamlined, and so are the applications that run on top of it. In terms of software with this guy, besides iOS 7, you also get the iLife and iWork suite for free. They're available as free downloads. That means GarageBand, iPhoto, iMovie, iWork, I which is Pages, Keynote, and the spreadsheet that Apple makes. Not bad, certainly, to be included with the tablet. And it's interesting that they're addressing what Microsoft's been doing with some of their lower-priced tablets, typically running Atom or Windows RT, been bundling Office inside, too. So Apple's keeping competitive doing that. Just like the iPhone 5S, the cameras have been improved with sensors that have larger pixel size. And you can see we have a 5-megapixel camera on the rear, and we're focusing on our little bath toy back here. 
HDR mode on and off. Simple UI is always typical of Apple. Your camera switching option right there. There's your shutter button. Tap to focus over here and you can choose between photo, video, and square photo mode over here. Just by sliding between them. And we're going to stick with photo. You can focus pretty close. That bath toy is pretty close. Quick picture taking. You know how tablet cameras go. They're very rarely fantastic, but this isn't bad at all. Good color, actually, and pretty sharp detail. Probably be pleasing enough to most folks. And if we switch to video mode, it's like an exciting picture of our bath tub going across the screen right there. And play that. An exciting picture Ten of bath there it is, 1080p video. Front camera is also improved, 1.2 megapixel for photos, 720p video. Bigger pixels means more light, means you look better when you're doing FaceTime or Skype video chat. Rear camera on our tablet has autofocus, face detection, backside illumination, a 5 element lens, f2.4 aperture, so pretty wide, pretty good for letting in low light. The front camera has face detection as well and a backside illuminated sensor also. Geotagging is optional. If you want to turn that on, you can turn that on. As ever, this has a retina display 9.7 inches. That's a resolution of 2048 by 1536. That's 264 PPI for those who keep track of such things. So one of the sharper, prettier, more color accurate displays on the market among tablets. Now, granted, there are tablets with even higher resolutions, starting with the Nexus 10, but still it's just hard to beat the iPad display. And even the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1, the 2014 edition, also has higher resolution, slightly larger display, so pixel density is not quite equivalent in comparison there, but still color accuracy here, really good. Obviously there's some glare, there's some reflection, you can see it on the bezel right there, you can see our camera flopping back and forth. It is a glossy display, supposedly fingerprint resistant, and we've got the Metropolitan Museum HD Art app up here, so we can see some pretty pictures and see how they look. And the detail is just lovely on these, and it's downloading these off the web right now. And the color accuracy, if you're familiar with these works of art, is very good. You can see pointillism real up close by zooming in here. It's, it's just a lovely, lovely display as ever. Something that you would expect from an iPad, and you're getting it here. Viewing angles are also wide. IPS display, other than the glare, it's going to pick up by moving it around nice and wide. The tablet's available with LTE, 4G, and Wi-Fi. That also has 3G as well for those of you who only have 3G in your area or just as Wi-Fi tablet. Tablet has Wi-Fi, 802.11bg, and dual band with MIMO. No AC on this. Tablet also has Bluetooth 4.0, and if you get the versions that have LTE, 4G, and 3G, you'll also get a GPS, otherwise you'll get Wi-Fi triangulation with the Wi-Fi only model. Wi-Fi only 16 gig model starts at $499, same price as ever for the iPad, and $629 for the LTE model available on all U.S. carriers. You can go up in capacity and price as well if you want, of course, with this. And the highest you can get is 128 gigs. That's going to be $799 Wi-Fi only and a whopping $929 for the 4G LTE model. Tablet is 0.29 inches thick and it has the same M7 Motion Co. processor that the iPhone 5S has. Now in the iPhone, that makes a whole lot of sense for perhaps health use, that kind of thing, pedometer tracking your exercise. In an iPad, I don't know how useful it's going to be. We'll have to see what developers come up with. Despite rumors, this does not have a fingerprint sensor. Our home button is just that, just a standard home button right here. Now, the outgoing iPad 4 or iPad with Retina display was certainly not slow by any means, though this one is even faster. We're going to try it a couple of games, because that's just about the most taxing thing you can do with a tablet. So we're testing out the new Dead Trigger 2 game. You can hear how the speakers are doing as well. Certainly fluid and fast. Nice graphics in this game, too. Very, very responsive. Hey, repair that barricade and I'll let you in. So the game plays just fine.
And Dead Trigger 2 has shooting for dummies here. You just face the right direction and it shoots for you now. Hell yeah. So it plays beautifully, nice graphics. It's all good. As ever, the iPad remains a premier gaming device, awesome game selection of Tier 1 games. And now we're trying out Nova 3, which is also graphically very impressive and demanding game. Plays beautifully, very smooth. Looking around the environment works just fine. Excellent experience. So that's Nova 3 on the iPad Air. As ever, I want the selling points for the iPad is the app selection, particularly applications that have been optimized for the tablet here. You even have Amazon Instant Video for your Prime members and non-Prime members. Oddly, something that's still lacking from Android tablets. Don't know why Amazon doesn't want to do that. Now, with Android tablets, the Tier 1 apps are generally optimized. Some, there were a few exceptions, like Twitter took forever to be optimized for big screens, but you'll find a larger selection of games and applications in general still available for the iPad. And, of course, the staples are here, too. We've got our iBooks application. As ever, it's... Lovely sharp display, so it's very good for reading. We do keep the skeuomorphism here. It looks like a printed book, complete with the page flipping, and you can do this in portrait and in landscape mode. A little bit easier to read and follow the lines, obviously, if you're using it in facing page mode. Web browsing is same as ever on the iPad, which is, say, fast and pretty reliable, good rendering. Looking at our own site, Mobile Tech Review. Support for HTML5 video, not Adobe Flash Player, which is quick disappearing from mobiles. And we'll play. Video for you here of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Today we're going to look at what's going to be one of the hotter notebooks probably for the year. This is the late 2013 edition Mac. So as ever you get the idea, really, this has all the features of the iPad with Retina Display, the iPad 4. It's just in a thinner and lighter package. We won't go over every feature, because pretty much you're looking at the same solid stuff that the last iPad had, just more compelling in a lighter package. Again, better for competing with Android tablets that have been getting thinner and lighter. Interestingly, though this got almost a half a pound lighter and much thinner, battery life hasn't suffered. Apple claims that's because the A7 CPU is so power efficient and Goodness only knows, but it's got a 32.4 watt hour rechargeable lithium ion inside, obviously sealed inside, and they claim it's good for the same 10 hours as the outgoing iPad. And so far in our tests, that has been true. That's with Wi-Fi on and active and in a mix of use, including some video streaming, HD playback, using it for iWork, doing email, surfing the web, playing some music, a mix of use. Very good battery life given the size and weight of the product. So that's the iPad Air. It's available now. Same pricing as all the previous generation iPads were when they first came out. And definitely Apple's best iPad later. That's easy to say. But this time they really did what the doctor ordered. How are you going to make a tablet better these days? Take it from being a little chunky monkey heavy tablet and make it the thinnest, lightest tablet on the market. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.